morning and welcome. Welcome to this first Sunday of Advent, a time to come together to prepare and to make ourselves aware of the coming of the Christ child. Know that wherever you are, wherever you have been, you are welcome here in the presence of our God. Please join me in our opening hymn. Brothers and sisters, it is good to be here with you this morning, to come into this place of worship, to be called and welcomed, to sing and pray together. Now, as we begin our worship, let us join in our opening call. Lift up your heart to the Lord. O God, in you I trust. You will bring us home at the right time. You give us hope of a home to come. Make us know of your ways, O Lord. Teach us your paths. On our journey of expectation, remind us again of your call to watch and journey toward the new heaven and new earth. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who follow and listen. The excitement of the season is upon us as we look with hope to your teachings and your ways. Please join me in our opening invocation. O God of hope, some of us come searching for a hope of stability of things past, while others seek the hope of a future change. Help us to look to the hope you give us in our home, in the present, and also 
to the home you prepare and plan for the future, the new heaven and new earth. In this time of worship, let us slow down our immediate plans and find hope in this home at this moment, with this family in this place, as we reflect on all we have received from you and where you are guiding us next. Amen. Let us join in our Advent candle lighting. The signs have been set out for us to see. Signs that sometimes scare us as we look to the future. Signs that also bring us a message of hope. It is the hope of salvation through the Christ child, a returning to our true home and a renewing of our hearts in our time in this home. As we light this candle, let us welcome home old family, new friends, and the hope of newness found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Our candle lighting verse for today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 14. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Let us pray. Dear God, on this first Sunday in Advent, let this light shine brightly as the days grow shorter, so that we will be ready for your face to shine upon us at Christmas. In Peter's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the hymn, My Soul Gives Glory to My God. My friends, we have been called into worship. We have been welcomed. We have prayed together. We have sung together. And we are also called by our God not only to worship, but to be transformed and made new. Let us do so now in our prayer for transformation and new life. Please join me in prayer. On our journey home, O oh God, we sometimes lose sight of the hope you intend for us. Bring us once again to the light which you shine upon our home and our journey, revealing your hope for this time and our future. Please hear the words of grace. Our God is steadfast in the <clears throat> promise made to watch over and care for us. Know that your missteps and fears are taken care of through the grace and mercy of our loving God of hope. Praise to God that hope and this home. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, verses 14 through 16. 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Here ends our first reading. As we begin our lesson today, and we come into this time of prayer and understanding, we begin a journey in Advent that starts with these prophecies, that start with a talking of the time to come, that start with some dark, and hard images. Israel at this point and Judah are in exile. Jeremiah is with them and he's giving them a word of hope as they're in these hard times that there will be a day sometime in the future where God is going to fulfill the promise made. But right now, they have be faithful. It's more than just coming together and celebrating in the good time, but also being there with one another and sharing in the hope of the future, even in our hard times, that becomes so important. Jeremiah is being very clear with them as to what's happening and whose responsibility it is. And this is the important part, because we struggle with this, don't we? We're looking at a time that is very difficult. And we want it all to change, and we want it to change now. We want it to go back, we want it to change for a different future. We want all sorts of things. And each person has a different need, and a different desire, and a different want. And God is saying, not yet. So part of what we're going to look at here as we come together, and our theme for this is coming home. So right now, as we begin Advent, one of the things that has come up is the fact that it's here already. It seems like we just finished Easter, and we're already at Advent. We took a deep breath, had a quick vacation over the summer, and now we're in Advent. Christmas is on its way. We're four weeks away. And the celebrations have to start. We've got to get everything decorated. The parties are going to be here. And then there's this idea of going home. And for some people, that's a great feeling. It's a heartwarming feeling. It's a comfortable feeling. For other people, maybe not so much. Maybe home wasn't the greatest place. But this message from Jeremiah is about not this home on this earth, but the home that's coming, this promise of God to take care of everyone, where there will be peace and love, and there won't be these hardships. But right now, we're stuck, and we got to come home. We'll find our hope in our home with God to look at the promises that are going to come. And we are going to look at those as we get into this next section. But for right now, just think about all that God is doing and calling us to as we share with one another, not just in the good times, but in these times where we're struggling. And God is calling us home. Come to this place where you can sit in the presence of God, wherever that is. See, because that's one of the interesting parts. When I was growing up, my grandfather always used to say, home is where your hat hangs, or where you hang your hat. So home, for him, had nothing to do with the building. It had nothing to do with what area he was living in. 
but where he hung his hat, where he stopped for the day to be in the presence of God, where he stopped from the work and sat with those who brought him comfort and joy. It was the place where he could rest from the work and the toil of the world. It was home. So as we start this, God is calling us to that type of thing. And to look at how do we then deal with today and stop and rest. And that is where God is calling us home. Whether it's coming into the sanctuary, whether it's coming to this type of online service, or whether it's sitting at home and reading scripture, wherever you're at. And finding God and the peace that comes with that. To look for the hope that comes out of these prophecies. So as Jeremiah says, the day is surely coming. He also says, says the Lord. That's an important phrase. Because you didn't say that just off the cuff. Because if you said the Lord said something, you better be sure that's what's coming. You were invoking the name of God. Remember that commandment? Do not take my name in vain. Don't make a vow in my name or say something. So Jeremiah is being very open with them, but also very, very serious. The day is surely coming. And God is the one that's going to raise up this righteous branch. He's going to raise up something and someone to bring righteousness and justice and peace to the world so that the new home and the promise can be fulfilled. We can't do it, but we can be with one another here and now. We can't make everything better, but we can make better just this immediate space by bringing that peace and hope that God has. And as Jeremiah says at the end of this, and this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. When we stop and we sit within the Lord, there are three things that happen. One, we find peace. We find a place where we can come and sit and not have to worry about the world around us. Two, we find justice. We find a place where we're no longer one person here and one person here, where it's not about color of skin, it's not about how much we make or what our job title is or what power we have, but instead that we are all children of God. There's justice. There's also justice in the healing process that will come as we sit there with God, and we may have been hurt by our brothers and sisters, by our family, by those who typically are referred to as home. But God is there trying to heal that. God is finding a way to help Israel and Judah come together, two separate nations, to make them whole again as God's people. That was the story of the Israelites. That was how they saw the Messiah joining the world together. And for them, it was the people of God, the Jewish faith. And the Messiah was going to come and it would bind them back together as David had. It would heal those hurts. So that's the second thing that can happen. You find that peace, you find the justice. And the third part that happens is we answer our calling to show love and care for one another, to give what is needed, to raise up those who are hurting, and to change just that small space that we are living in for right now, to show a little bit of that home that God is creating. 
to let the world see a glimpse of this new heaven and new earth in the way it could be. Now, we will be talking more about all of this and how these prophecies bring hope as well as being honest about where we're at now. We'll do that in our next section. But for now, please join me in reciting the prayer that Jesus taught us as a family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the hymn, Almighty God, when I survey in wonder. Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 25 through 36. 
Hear the words of Jesus. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now these things, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your head because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves that summer is coming and you know it is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Here ends our second reading. May it have rich blessings on your lives. Okay, so if Jeremiah was giving them hope, this passage seems to bring in much more of that darkness which we didn't get in the Jeremiah passage. Although, if you read everything around that, you will see the darkness that Jeremiah is referring to. And you'll get a much better glimpse of what their world was like. But Jesus is being very specific with the disciples. He wants them to prepare themselves and to steady themselves, to protect themselves from all these things that are happening in the world so that they stay alert and they know that something is coming. Even if they don't know exactly when, they'll see the signs. There'll be signs in the sun and the stars and the moon just as if the fig tree, as Jesus puts it, sprouts its leaves and you know summer is coming. We'll know that the kingdom of God is near, that we're being called home, that we're being redeemed. I want to stop for a second, because we don't understand God's timing. We don't understand the present, the future, and the past all at once, and it's impossible to be present in all three at once. What we can do is understand this. When we are walking through these times, God is walking with us. The kingdom of God is near. Jesus is very specific about that. That while these things are happening, know that the kingdom of God is there and stand up. Raise your head. Because you know you're going to be redeemed. That there is this new heaven and new earth that are coming. And he talks about that in the next passage, that the old heaven and earth will pass away, but God's promise will not. Jesus' words will not. Jesus is the promise of the life to come, the redemption to come, the salvation to come. What he's talking about when he says, you'll see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Jesus beat death, was victorious over death because of God raising him from the dead, redeeming him, resurrecting him. These are important times and things to know. Jesus is being very honest with them. You're going to go through hard times. Home isn't always going to feel good. This home that we're in now, earth, this life is not our end. But we have to travel through it until our time is done. 
when we're redeemed by Christ. Redeemed by our God through that power of resurrection. Seems odd to talk about that in Advent, but at the same point, we need to be preparing ourselves as we're coming home, as we're preparing for all these other things, and we know that everything is coming, and there's this anxiety of having to prepare, having to get ready for the parties, having to do the Christmas shopping, having to have everything set. God is saying, stop. Take some time. Know I am near and come and sit in the hope of the home to come. We are being called home as we do our Advent journey this year. We're being called into a time and space that is so important. And to know that God is present in that time and space wherever we're at. You hear me say it at the beginning of every service. Wherever you are, wherever you have been, you are welcome here in the presence of our God. Our God is looking for the faithful, for those who will come and repent, for those who will come and change their way, will find the hope of renewal, and will find a home where there is justice and peace and caring. As Jesus tells them this, he is making sure that they know there's hope. So he's being honest, but it's not hopeless. We're going through things, but there is hope. Our God is walking with us. And as we journey now, we are going to prepare ourselves. We're going to strengthen ourselves so that we're not caught off guard. so that we're not caught up so much in the world that we can't see what's going on around us and know that God is present. We're being redeemed. Each thing changes us just a little bit. Some of that change is hurtful. Some of it strengthens us and makes us into who we're going to be. I've talked about this with many people. If you had told me at 22 when I quit drinking that that being an alcoholic was going to be a blessing, it didn't seem like much of a blessing, folks. But it was, and it has been. And it changed me and made me stronger as I went through it. But God walked through it with me. There was a transformation. I was being made new. And it continues today. There's always something changing and being made new as I go through each of these situations, as I journey in this life and know because Jesus' word is not going to pass away that there's a new home to which I'm being called and God wants me to be a part of. That is an amazing gift. It is the gift that's about to come into the world. So as Jesus comes into our home, as we prepare for this Christ child, for this hope for the future, don't let the hopelessness of the world and the anxiety of everything the world tells you you have to do take over your life. Come. Come home to where God is. Hang your hat. And sit in the hope of God where you'll find peace and love, justice, hope, and joy. Our God is here. Our God is very honest with us and makes us take an honest look at ourselves. So let us do that in this time of preparation, to honestly look at where we're at and let God transform us. Remember, God is our righteousness. God will make it right, will be just. God will redeem if we'll just come in and know that there is a new home waiting for us. What an amazing and glorious thing. 
And all God's people said, Amen. Now, our God is a generous God who grants us the gift of sharing in that generosity. Let us do so now as we start in our invitation to generosity. As recipients of God's generosity, let us reflect now what we have received with each other, in the community, and what we will give back. In these moments of silence, make your vows. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. For the wondrous ways this offering will bless this community, we dedicate these gifts. For the ways it will help us live out God's mission, we dedicate these gifts. Let these gifts strengthen our call to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. Please join me in the hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together. Let us join in the Holy Sacrament of Communion. Beloved, come to the table of love. What kind of love do you need to feed your soul today? Do you need acceptance, forgiveness, radical welcome, comfort, nourishment? This bread and cup, though simple and small, are a reminder that Jesus gave all so that we might know the depth of God's love for us in all its forms. Fill your cup today. Be filled by this table of overflowing with love for you and the world, which can be poured, which can then be poured out generously for others. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing 
by all will mean scarcity for none. We remember the covenant you made with your people Israel, and we give you thanks for all our ancestors in faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people everywhere, and that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and die on the cross for us, to be raised up from death on the third day, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for your presence of the Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered with your sons and daughters of faith in all places and time, we praise you with joy. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is he, the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples together for the feast of the Passover. He took the bread and after giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection, we declare. Christ's coming, we await. Glory be to you, O God. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Jesus' suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives, committed to your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal throughout all our lives, that we may know you as the Holy One, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. On the night of betrayal, Jesus took the bread and he raised it up and gave thanks to God for those who had planted and harvested, milled and made the bread, for those who had served it and for those who were partaking it. Then he took that bread and he gave it to the disciples, breaking it and saying, this bread is often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and giving thanks for all those who had grown and harvested, who had stomped and made the wine and served it, those who were about to partake in it. He looked at them and raised it up and said, this cup is a new covenant made in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Come, for all is ready. This is the body of Christ which was broken for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ which was shed for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. 
Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Now may the Lord who brought you here fill you with the hope of Christmas, the peace of the Christ child, the love of our God, and the joy of life everlasting. Go in peace, my friends. Please join me in our closing hymn. Friends, I am so glad you were able to be here today. And it is my prayer and my hope that something in this service begins to walk you on this Advent journey, begins to move you to a new place and a new understanding. Now I ask for your help. First, pray for us here. Pray that we would have the resources and the wisdom to know what God is calling us to do and to take that out into the world and do it as best we are able. Then, if you haven't done so already, you'll see a couple buttons that are going to come up shortly, one of which will be a cross with a green cloth on it. That's our subscribe button. Subscribe and let us know who it is that's joining us in this ministry that we can reach out and be of service. And finally, if you are willing and feel so called, Hit the Donate Now button. Give as God is placing upon your hearts and know that your generosity goes back out into the world to touch the lives of those in our community, our church, and the greater world. To keep ministries like this and our youth programs, our food shelf, and our outreach programs all running, taking that love of God out into the world. We thank you in advance for any generosity you give. No matter how large or small that gift, it touches people in so many ways. Now, 
may you have a blessed journey this week, and may God go with you. Go in peace, man.